Hello everyone, welcome to Programming Credit. In this video, we'll talk about what are some of the key skills needed for a data scientist in 2024. We will start with some of the obvious ones, and uh, but then we are also going to talk about some of the not so obvious ones. And uh, these are the skills which are not, not talked about a lot. But then when you go to the industry, you see these skills are valued a lot. Uh, and sometimes even more than some of the obvious ones. So we'll start with some of the technical skills and we will also talk about soft skills. Uh, so yeah, that's exactly what we are going to talk about in this uh, video. And if you want to subscribe to the channel or if you are new here, please go subscribe to the channel and be a part of Programming Credit family. And also hit the bell icon so that you get notified each time when a video goes live. And if you end up liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. It always keeps you motivated to make such videos for you guys. Now with that being said, let's get into the video. So the first skill is programming skill, which is the most obvious one. Uh, so there are mainly two programming languages like Python and R. Different companies use different kind of languages, but I think Python is the most popular programming language. So if you are someone who doesn't know programming and if you're just starting out, I think safe bet will be to go with Python programming. But I think it's also better to maybe try both of the languages and uh, see which one suits you the best because I've seen some of the data scientists, they really like R, the way R works and the functionalities R provide. And then based on that, they just try to build the project around R. Uh, but I think Python is the more versatile programming language and I personally prefer P Python because I can do a lot more um, apart from just the data science stuff uh, with Python. So that's uh, the kind of choice that you need to make and I'll leave it to you do a little bit of research and then based on the research you can choose one or the other so the first thing is programming with that being said let's move on to the next skill which is maths and stat so in maths and stats you need to know some of the key concepts like uh, probability linear algebra calculus hypothesis testing you don't need to be able to solve those complex uh, uh, integration problems which you use to solve in your board exam but at least you need to know what is the practical implications of uh, integration and differentiation because when you have to solve some uh, optimization problem you will be able to solve them so you need to know those things um, in maths and stats sometimes when i talk about uh, these concepts people get really scared uh, because i think this is the most scariest past part when people think about becoming a data scientist, but this is essential. You have to know maths and stats, and uh, it is a backbone of whole machine learning, deep learning, and the kind of analysis that you will do. And when you have to prove your analysis to the stakeholders, it's important to have it uh, backed by statistics because by just showing charts, it's not going to prove anything. Uh, so that's the second thing. With that being said, let's move on to the next skill which is machine learning. And yes, machine learning is still very relevant in today's market. And you cannot simply jump to deep learning or generative AI without learning anything about machine learning. Because when you know machine learning, it becomes really easy to understand deep learning and generative AI. So, but then also in the market, machine learning is very relevant, especially in medical domain simply because it is interpretable and also it does not require huge amount of data and it is much cheaper to build the models uh, so and also it performs very similar if not better than deep learning models so that's why a lot of companies they still prefer to use machine learning models over deep learning and generative ai and when you go to an interview unless they are really looking for a generative ai engineer the interview will always have machine learning related questions and if you are able to answer those questions then only they will jump into deep learning and generative ai part but if you are not able to answer machine learning questions then they will just uh, stop there and they will never move to deep learning and generative ai so it doesn't really matter if you know deep learning and generative ai really well but then you struggle with machine learning you will not be able to show your uh, ability in those areas so it's always very important to know machine learning as well now with that being said let's move on to the next skill which is deep learning so deep learning yes like i told you it is very important now because generative ai is a subset of deep learning and uh, to know more about generative AI, if you are really interested in uh, generative ai you need to understand sequence to sequence model and then you can maybe move on to attention model 
and then you need to learn about transformers so these are built on top of each other and uh, they have developed over the years so to know one you need to know the other as well and once you start to understand the basics of uh, deep learning you will start to appreciate generative ai as well uh, so that's the other skill you need to know deep learning as well now with that let's move on to the next skill i, I think i already mentioned generative ai as part of deep learning so i won't con i won't include uh, it as a separate skill but when you are learning about deep learning and when you have already covered your deep learning part i think it's better to move to generative ai and uh, learn more about it so that's deep learning and generative ai now with that being said let's move on to the next skill which is big data so when you go to industry these days you will never find uh, data in an excel sheet or in a csv file maybe you will but that's very very rare in most of the cases you will always have data in millions and uh, to be able to handle those huge chunk of data it is important that you understand big data concepts like uh, spark or uh, pyspark if you want to work in python environment or uh, snowpark if you are working with uh, snowflake things like that so it's important to know those uh, big data technologies because then you will be able to handle those big chunk of data quite efficiently and you will be able to parallelize your uh, process so that's very important and you need to focus on big data technologies as well now with that let's move on to the next skill which is cloud computing or cloud services you need not know the full architecture of uh, a cloud infrastructure for example aws what you need to know is how to use aws services for example aws uh, SageMaker, aws jumpstart or uh, CloudWatch. So they have a lot of services. They have over 200 services. You don't need to know about all of those services, but there are a lot of services which are created specifically for data scientists, for example, SageMaker. Um, so you need to know how to use those services because when you go to an industry, they rarely do anything related to data science on their local systems. So if you know how to use uh, cloud infrastructure or cloud services, it will make your life much more easier to work in an industry. And if you're able to show them that you have these skills, it will give them an assurance that, okay, this guy has worked on um, cloud infrastructure. So he or she knows how to carry out a data science lifecycle on a cloud platform. Now, the last technical skill that I want to talk about is Git and GitHub. It's very important for you to know about Git and GitHub. Uh, sometimes people take it for granted. But when you go to industry, you never work on a single project alone. There will always be your team members. And when you have to collaborate with them, it's important that you know Git, GitHub. Because most of the companies, they use Git, GitHub as their collaboration tool. If not all the companies, it is one of the most popular ones. So it's important to know how to work uh, using git and github so these are all the technical skills that you need to have as a data scientist now let's talk about some of the soft skills soft skills are very important sometimes they can be more important as compared to technical skills because when you are building something you can always find things online and you can put things together and you will be able to build your application but then when it comes to uh, soft skills they are really hard to uh, put together if you don't have them already and uh, also to learn those things it takes quite a lot of time when compared to uh, technical skills so the first uh, soft skill that i would like to talk about is domain knowledge and uh, it may not be a problem for someone who has some amount of experience in industry but it is a big problem for those who are just starting out and just trying to get into data science uh, especially for freshers so how to gain domain knowledge? Uh, so what you need to do is you first need to decide whether you want to get into health sector or do you want to get into financial sector or do you want to get into supply chain? Once you have made your mind, go to Kaggle, pick a data set from that domain and try to do in-depth analysis of that. Try to read uh, what other people have done in the notebook section of Kaggle. You will be able to see what kind of analysis they have used and when moving from uh, domain to domain or sector to sector the kind of charts they also vary 
So you need to see what kind of charts are very popular in a specific domain. And based on that, you can do several projects and uh, put those projects in your CV. So for example, if you're applying for a medtech company, it's important to have uh, medtech related projects in your CV and then applying to those uh, companies because that way they will see that, okay, you have worked on multiple projects uh, from the same domain and uh, that may help you land a call at least. So based on that, I think you can decide which sector you want to go and based on that you can uh, do your projects and you will also be able to gain domain knowledge while doing those projects. Now with that being said, let's move on to our next soft skill, which is communication. So it doesn't matter how good analysis you have done, but if you're not able to convey that analysis to your stakeholders, and if you're not able to give them actionable points, then that analysis of no use, it goes straight into the bin. So it's very important to have those skills, communication skills, and uh, be able to present your analysis to your stakeholders so communication is very important now with that let's move on to the next soft skill which is ethical understanding because as a data scientist you will be dealing with quite a lot of data sometimes those data will include personal information and sometimes you will also have to collect data from the internet so you need to understand legal implications ethical implications of uh, collecting and using those data so i've seen this with a lot of freshers as soon as they get a problem statement they straight away jump into data collection data cleaning and all sorts of things without even thinking about what are the ethical implications surrounding the data so you really need to think about that before jumping into the project because when you're doing projects on personal level it may not be a huge issue but when you're working for a company and if you do these kind of uh, mistakes it can lead to a huge uh, legal issue for the company and then in turn it will be a harmful thing for you as well. So it's very important to understand about these uh, ethical implications uh, surrounding data. Now the last thing that I would like to talk about is continuous learning and just yesterday I made a video about uh, how to stay up to date in, uh, in the world of data science because the data science world is moving with a really fast pace and if you are someone who gets a job and you feel like now i have a job i don't really need to learn anything new you will be outdated within a year so you need to know and you need to have that motivation uh, so if you're not sure how to stay up to date you can check out my video it will be somewhere here or here it's always confusing to point out which side but you will be able to find it uh, on the top right corner of your screen so yeah do check out that video after this one so these were the points which i wanted to discuss in this video if you found this video helpful do give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to the channel already do subscribe and check out that video how to stay up to date in the world of data science bye happy learning